Back here with the Neo Geo MVS 161-in-1 new version upgrades. And I've done all the upgrades that I want to do now, which I will show off. Uh, first, I want to show off, and I want to give credit where credit is due, Gadget UK 164 is a YouTube uh, member, I guess you could say member, I don't know, guy that makes YouTube videos, or Gadget UK on the Neo Geo forums, uh, found that the these two PCM channel pins, which um, are SD... Oh, they start with SD. One's pin 55 and one is pin 47. Uh, this pin right here is 47, that pin's 55. On the A board um, of the soundboard, you can see this is actually labeled. That's your PCM FPGA chip right there, which is an Altera Max. And he found that putting two 47 Pico Farad capacitors uh, help fix some of the sound issues in some of the games. And what's amazing is this new board design actually has pads for them now, which is great but they didn't populate them. Not sure what that's all about. So anyway, um, moving on, I went ahead and upgraded everything in the power supply section. I replaced these uh, very janky, very questionable 47 microfarads with 200 microfarads. Uh, some nice Nietzsche cons. I put in... Um, High frequency decoupling caps, these are 0.1 UF or 100 NF on both the input and the output power rails, as should be done appropriately. And that's it for this board. For the other board, oh, I take that back. For the back of the board, I went ahead and populated all the unpopulated parts with 100 NF decoupling caps, as is proper spec for the uh, these, these FPGA chips. Um, it's important. So I got that all kind of up to snuff. And lastly, I went ahead and populated the missing 100 NF caps on the back here and did the same thing for this guy here, these two 100 NFs. And I put the two decouplings here and here for the input and output rails. Uh, I noticed another just really bad mistake. There's a lot of mistakes in the analog power stage. Um, one is that this this should be closer to the chip. Um, that 100 UF. And then if you look at this one, this 100 microfarad, I pointed out this in the other part of this video, the earlier video, uh, this trace is really short, but not only is it really short, it's actually coming after, quite a bit after the output. So the output here should be tied to here. It shouldn't go to the chip and then have sort of the 100 microfarad um, as an afterthought. It's supposed to be a, a ripple rejection and, and other things, it's supposed to come in between the output um, and, and the input supply rail. So they totally made some amateur mistakes there. And that's all right, though. I mean, all this stuff is, you know, it's optional. I don't think your, uh, your boards aren't going to work without it or have problems necessarily. You know, I don't know over time or not. I will say the solder is actually much nicer in these new boards. They used a better quality solder, which is great. And, um, you know, in all likelihood, things will be totally fine, but I want to do these because I want these boards to last a long time, and I'm not going to be able to afford the really nice flash car anytime soon. So I'll be playing these, some Samurai Showdown 4, and uh, some Magical Drop, like all the cool kids do. That's all for now. Sega Sonic fan, signing out.